<laughs> but my point no. is, if you had to rank the first three, what would the three ranked as? Well, uh, you mean like rank them amongst each other, or like rank them? Which one's the best, and which one's the, well, here's the what third I hate, best? Here's another thing I hate about the yeah, prequels. Go. Okay, <laughs> uh, you can't even you can't. Okay, and I don't mean to bum anybody out, but you can't even. Okay, I, I challenge you right now, Jay Steele. You were four years oh. old. You've grown up with the prequels. I want you to give me one memorable line from one of those first three movies from the prequels. Give me there. one epic line, like like I've got a bad feeling about this, or yeah. those aren't the droids you're looking for. Give me a line. There's always a bigger fish. Oh dear God! Okay, maybe <laughs> that might be it. No, but no, it that, doesn't count because that has the, the word fish in the it. The irony is that it's not an epic line. <laughs> like it's like such a. There's always a bigger fish. Like it's so boring. You gotta I, say it like. I wait, wait. You gotta say it like like Liam Neeson. No, there's always a bigger fish. Yeah. Like, was he, that, was well, he I Irish? Like Sean, in the movie? I sound like Sean Connery. Yeah. Was he Irish was in the movie though, or did he change his accent? I don't remember. Was he Irish? I, I don't know. He was a Qui Gon Jinn. He was. He was. Yeah. He, he was from somewhere. He I don't was think from I can gins. remember any other lines. He was though. from the Jinn family. <laughs> Maybe they the, made Jinn. The Jinn like. I should have had some Jinn before I saw the movie. Actually, <laughs> you know what else? So you know what else really stunk about that year was 1999. We're going back uh, now. Yeah. 1999, The Matrix, the first Matrix mm. movie, came out in March of 99. And I love that movie so much because that, again, changed my life. That was another epic, like, holy mackerel. What, this movie is amazing. And then Star Wars came out in June of 99. And I was like, oh, my gosh, The Matrix? Now Star Wars? This is going to be great. And Star Wars was so bad. Yeah. And if I'm bumming anybody out, by the way, I really apologize. But I, I, I just – when you see something – and that's why I want to tell, tell you guys out there. When you make something that means so much to people, try and keep – what you've made as pure as you possibly can. Now I'm going to get a lot of comments right now. I know. Well, Butch, fairly odd parent. These these are the people commenting. Yeah. Sorry, this <laughs> yeah, is my yeah. this is my person commenting voice. I'm sorry. I get all these comments. I get a lot of great comments all the time. But a lot of people complain. Butch, how come FOP has changed so much? How come the first seasons aren't as good as the as the or the the later seasons aren't as good as the first seasons and things like that? My excuse is. I had to do my show for 15 years straight. I mean, and I want to thank everybody out there for letting Fairly Odd Parents be on for 15 years. I mean, even six, at this point, 16 years, been running nonstop. And I am so appreciative of all the fans out there, guys. Thank you so much. But you get that occasional fan. Out of the hundreds of great comments I get, I get one or, one or two comments be like, well, the new episodes stink. They're so bad. Why did you add Sparky or why did you add Poof? Why? It's like, listen, we had to do something. We had to add new characters to keep the show fresh. You know, mm -hmm. Star Wars is one movie. Every five or six years, you know, now every year they're doing yeah. it. But, but still, you have one movie. I had to do multiple hundreds, hundreds of episodes over the course of 15 years. You've got to keep adding fresh things and new things and new faces all the time, which is why I'd add new characters. Why'd you add Chloe? I can't believe you did that. Well, I added most of these characters because the network asked me to. Mm -hmm. And so to keep your job and to keep the show going, that's what happens. And by the way, all of you out there that are in entertainment, if that ever happens to you, you'll learn that you have to do those kind of things. And so I know the purists out there, I completely appreciate it. If I was making movies where it was one story once in a while, totally get it. But uh, yeah, that's the difference between TV shows and movies. So anyway, mm -hmm. The, the Star Wars thing. What was the question again? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go back to my we question. Talk, sorry. We should went I'm, on a I'm total having, rant of the prequels. Uh, I apologize. You can <laughs> tell I'm very passionate about this. No, totally. Um, if you had to rank the original first three, <sighs> A New Hope, I'm sorry. <sighs> oh, those three? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, yeah, I'm oh, saying yeah. Yeah, A New yeah, Hope? The, the first three okay, we'll, we'll say like Star that came out. Star Wars, Empire, Jedi? Yes. For me, it goes Empire, Star mm -hmm. Wars, Jedi. Mm -hmm. and now, do you dislike Jedi? Because you I said don't. you said you don't like the puppets in Jabba's palace. Like, oh, what's, what's up with that? I have a lot of problems with Jedi, okay. but but more than the other ones. Compared to yeah. the prequels, uh -huh. Jedi is gone with the wind. Okay, <laughs> it is it's gone with the wind. It is it is gone with the wind. It's Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. It's one of the best movies ever uh -huh. made compared to the prequels. Yes, there's always a bigger fish. I keep saying that. Um, Such a beautiful. But no, line. no. Um, uh, Jedi is good because it has all the original characters in it. Mm -hmm. You see Han Solo get saved out of the carbonite. That's really cool. Uh, uh, I'll just say this for the, and I, I mean this. I love my wife. I have a wife that I love. I have two beautiful daughters. Carrie Fisher's in a bikini. That's all I'm saying. Okay, you <laughs> whoa, have that. Whoa. You have that. And um, and then you have uh, a great epic story where he, uh, Luke has to turn Darth Vader uh, to the good side, and he won't. He won't embrace his dark side like his father did. And then you see Darth Vader's face at the end. and all. That. There's a lot of cool reveals in that movie, and a lot of cool um, uh, finales in that movie, which mm -hmm. is really, really great. They're rebuilding the Death Star. Lando comes back and actually is a good guy. One thing that bummed me out about Jedi, I didn't like that Lando flew the Millennium Falcon into the into the Death Star that was under construction. Oh, Han yeah. Solo was down on the uh, on the moon with the uh, Ewoks. <laughs> There's a whole podcast there. <laughs> I was about to ask about the Ewoks. Keep <laughs> we're going to do going. the Ewok podcast yeah. later. But, again, 
Ewoks, Gone with the Wind compared to the other ones. So, but, um, <laughs> compared to Jar Jar. Oops, oh, and I shouldn't have mentioned. Why I'm did you so say sorry. That I'm name. so sorry. I why have. did you say oh, that, that name? Was bad. Yeah. Oh, Misa, no. so, Misa, Misa, so, Misa, so terrified to talk about Jar Jar. Oh, my, sorry about that. Oh, Okie Day. He says Okie Day, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's where Bunsen's voice came from, actually. He's a little bit of Jar Jar yeah. Binks, Bunsen's mm-hmm. the Beast. Anyway, so. Uh, what was I talking about again? I'm getting lost. Like, I'm ranting so much. Oh, uh, you didn't like that Lando oh, oh, was in the yeah. Oh yeah, I thought I. You should see Han Solo flying the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, and that and you're like when 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 um when Lando was flying it as good as Han Solo, mm-hmm. I was like, well, all right, I can let that slide. And then Boba well, Fett. Lando owned it before Han. I know that, but Han. So he can. But buy Han it got the same. better. I know. I yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But also <laughs> like, but then they then then the other thing too in Empire Strikes Back, they spend this whole movie introducing Boba Fett. Boba Fett is in Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Boba Fett, that this oh this guy is gonna be awesome. Oh yeah. And then they kill him in the first five <laughs> minutes of Return of the Jedi. And it wasn't even an epic death. They're just like, oh no. Yeah, he falls into a hole. Yeah. And he falls into the monster's mouth uh-huh. and he's dead. And I will tell you this. Here's my theory. Mm-hmm. I have a theory. I think the entire reason those prequels exist is because they were mad they killed Boba Fett and wanted to <laughs> sh- introduce him as, uh, to introduce him to. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. That's my theory. I'm sticking with it. That's my theory, folks. Interesting. Yeah, because when I saw it, I saw them basically back to back those mm-hmm. movies. So I didn't yeah. have like a big buildup of like, what are they gonna do with Boba Fett? What's what are yep. they gonna do in the next yep. one? But for you, yep. how many years was it in between? Like how between many, between what Empire? Between Empire and Jedi. Oh, it was three years. Yeah. So like, you then, had so much hype. Star and Wars came out. Star. I, th- that's why this again. This is how burned into my brain all yeah. this is. Star Wars came out in '77. Jedi came out in 1980, followed by Raiders of the Lost Ark, which mm-hmm. we'll have to do a podcast on. It's one of my all-time favorite movies. And then, um, then E.T. came out, and then Jedi came out in 1983. Wow. And so there was a whole era there of just amazing, awesome Spielberg, Lucas, Lucas Spielberg movies happening in the late eight, uh, uh, 70s, early 80s. That just, if you were a filmmaker or like a kid who wanted to be in the movies back then, like I was, it was just, wow, this is the greatest time ever. And I have not recaptured that feeling since for me mm-hmm. um matrix almost did it but then the two matrix sequels ruined it for me i didn't like the matrix sequels either there were good parts in those but they didn't have any story anymore and then um raiders of the lost ark almost did it the first raiders was great temple of doom i didn't care for very much but i loved um the uh, search for the grail the third one with sean mm-hmm. connery last crusade last crusade yeah, yeah. sorry the search for the grail sorry that's it's not my fault uh, <laughs> but the sean connery one uh, that was a really good movie i enjoyed that mm-hmm. and then uh the and then kingdom of the crystal skull we I mean, will not even mention we, again again with jar jar we don't mention kingdom of the crystal <laughs> I, skull I i'm gonna make a list of things we don't mention yep. we don't mention those things okay <laughs> and then up above it'll say there's always a bigger fish. there's always a bigger fish <laughs> oh my gosh i know it's so so bad Wait, so I got to go back to yeah. something. We're going back. You don't like the Ewoks? Nobody, well, hardly anyone likes the Ewoks. Well, I got to say this. Here's when I when I was a kid, when I saw um was I was about 18. When I was uh, 18 and saw Jedi for the first time, I didn't dislike the Ewoks. Mm-hmm. But I was like, okay, the, all right, it's a Star Wars movie. I'm watching yep. this cuz think about this too. Think about the time I lived in back then. You didn't have DVDs. Video stores weren't even existing back then. You couldn't really take videotapes to your house at that time. Uh, so if you went to the movies, that was the only time you could see it. Mm-hmm. You couldn't see it anywhere else. There were no phone. God, there were no phones, so you couldn't see anything. <laughs> God. But you had to go to the movies, and that was it. And maybe a few years later, they would play it on TV, maybe. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I was just glad I was seeing a Star Wars movie back then. And I did like the Ewoks. They were kind of cute. Mm. I thought a little bit – I thought I thought some of the sequences were boring. But I really love that Luke was becoming a Jedi Master. Uh, that was cool. I hated Mark Hamill's haircut. We'll get into that later on. Uh, <laughs> Did it change between the movies? Hit, no, his haircut, um, he had this weird like bowl cut yeah. in in uh, Jedi for some but reason. But he didn't in the previous two? I don't even No, well, in the first one, he's got like long hair. He looks really good. Yeah. I, know, I know Mark Hamill had some sort of an accident, mm. and he, he went through the window of a car. And the That's poor right. guy, his face got a little mangled. But uh, And in, in M- Empire, he looks good. But for some reason, his hair... In uh, Jedi, it just wow. looks really straight. I wasn't weird. curious about it. Yeah. Hair. Some weird hair thing. Uh, but And and so so I was just glad. The Ewoks are okay. I did like the forest sequence. I thought it was good. I liked the speeder bike sequence. was really cool. Mm-hmm. That was a really neat sequence. Uh, uh, apparently, Luke can fly anything perfectly. Luke can just, you know, zipping through trees at a million <laughs> miles an hour. No problem for yeah. Luke Skywalker. Of he course. can do that. And that was actually shot really well. I enjoyed that sequence. Yeah. You can uh, kind of still get into that now. If you watch Star Wars... Empire and Jedi on a binge thing, you could still have a really good time these days. Mm-hmm. But just the prequels just drive me insane. The only characters that work in the prequels, kind of, are the characters from the original movies. 3PO, 
and Obi-Wan, who's played by uh, Ewan McGregor. Because he's mm-hmm. Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're kind of wondering what's going to happen with him. Yeah. That kind of works still, but other than that. What yeah. do you think about CGI Yoda? Oh, God. Did you like, well, first of it's all, fine. let's know, talk it, about, did you like his character, and did you like his character design with CGI? Like, well, okay, here, here's the thing. What I, 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 I've been going on a Twitter thing lately about CGI and stuff, and I respect CGI, and I love mm-hmm. CGI. We yeah. couldn't do, I mean, CGI is amazing. Um, but people tend to put a lot more focus on CGI and, and, and the way things look anymore and don't care about story as much. And we're going to have another podcast very soon. Where we talk about story and movies and TV and stuff and, and everything. But they made Yoda like this squadron leader in, in like one of the mm-hmm. movies, one of the prequels. And that to me, that's not Yoda. What bothered me about the okay, okay, here's the main thing that bothered me about the whole Star Wars situation with the prequels. Okay. When the first Star Wars movie came out, which I'm calling Star Wars, I will not call it New <laughs> Go Home. ahead. No one's talking. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Star Wars comes out, and it's all about the rebellion against the Empire. The, oh, the Empire's taken over. The Empire's bad. They've taken us over. We need to rebel against the Empire. Look how bad they are. And the, you know, So Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi are all about destroying the rebellion. Or, uh, excuse me, sorry about destroying the Empire. Great. But then the prequels come along, and we see what the Empire really is. Okay, this is the Empire everybody's so worried about. Things are pretty good. And as we go along, the Jedi have this, like, high council chamber. They, it's funny. The Jedi are dressed, like, in rags and robes. And they meet, like, at the at the uh, penthouse suite of the Ramada Inn. <laughs> yeah, like, they have this, like, totally. amazing penthouse suite <laughs> with, like, you know, like, chrome tables and yeah. cup holders. And it's like, what is going on? The Jedi should be meeting, like, in secret, like, in a cave. Yeah. You know, they should be meeting, like, in a— Totally. They should be meeting in, like, like a forest, like, mm-hmm. like somewhere away from— technology and, and keeping the old ways and stuff. But instead, they've got like waitresses and they've got like, you know, room service. And I'm like, what is this? And they're on this city planet. What's the, what's the name of the city planet? Uh, can't even remember it, can you? <laughs> exactly. I told yeah, you. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you can't. you're right. I can name like all the ones from the original one. Uh, Alderaan, Naboo, Cloud City. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dagobah System. Yeah, you can name sure. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah, the, yeah, I call it Planet City. You're sitting, you can't even think of it. Is Look, it, you can't even think of it. Which one's, which one's Kashyyyk? Is that, is that one? That's Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Okay, I no think, one cares. Isn't Kashyyyk the, the Wookiee planet? Isn't that? Uh, oh, that's right. That, yeah, that's, that's in the prequels. Planet, right? yeah. Yes, exactly. I can remember that. I uh, think I remember that one from Star Tours because yeah. we go on. That, that's the one. Oh, you you're going to go time. to a freaking Disneyland <laughs> to remember it. Okay, yeah. so there you go. That's another thing we'll talk about too. Anyway, yeah. Star Tours um, was awesome. But the city, okay, so anyway, the, so the Jedi are in the Ramada Inn trying to, quote, fight evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, bring me another seven and seven, please. <laughs> so, and then. Um, then, like, like there's a rebellion, right? Like, like mm-hmm. the bad, like the empire is closing in on them, right? And you would think when the empire closes in, like everything would be lost, like the whole thing, like. But, but you know, so they kill all the Jedi in a very dumb way, and a couple of them get away, I guess. And then, oh, then they had a Jedi jamboree in the mall where all the little kids could learn how to be a Jedi. Remember that the little oh, kids, oh, the younglings, the little, with their, the young. Oh, the young, the young and, he, and Anakin killed the younglings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The younglings. Yeah, good old like, Anakin. Like Padme is like the younglings. Oh, you killed. Yeah, there was something like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, so that was the dark, so the, the it wasn't that dark. It was for looking. me. I was a youngling when uh, I saw. It. I know you were. Like exactly. you're Anakin, you're killing but, me. But when you saw the younglings, you knew they had toy lightsabers from like Kmart. You're like, <laughs> what are those toy lightsabers they have? <laughs> when you dissect it like that, yeah, it's not as yes. Cool. And then, but then you'd think, okay, boy, the Empire really has just oh. really destroyed everything but not really the jedi are gone kind of but like the city plan is still going and everyone's partying still i'm like why is the empire so bad what are we rebelling against and that's what i was like what why what is going on here i don't understand what was so bad you know and anyway it's just really huge letdown it's like i could have written a better story and they they should have asked me you know (laughs) and then by the way then, then we leap forward in time to uh, Indiana Jones and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, where oh, Shia LaBeouf is thing. swinging on vines through yeah. the jungle, and I was like, well, okay, yeah, it's all—it all just started <laughs> falling apart. Speech bubble. Hey, Heart fans, subscribe here to keep up with me, Danny, Timmy, Dudley, Bunsen, and the Noob Network, my new app full of cartoons, shows, and games. Download it here. Click over here to watch my most recent video and here to start a playlist related to this video. Whoa, check out that awesome fan art. To be featured here, use hashtag heartfanart and tag me. I'm on every social media platform known to man. Cartoon Butch out. Pencil drop.